I took a really circular route into comics. I, uh, I went to school for fine art, um, which in retrospect is one of those decisions that just confuses me. Um, but I just had no idea what was involved in any kind of artistic production. So um, I did that, and then I kind of you know, hung around doing drawings for a couple of years. And then I started doing comics for a, uh, a zine that was being done out of Williamsburg called Hodags and Hodaddies. And uh, it was Xerox with a laminated cover, and you know, it was handed out to all my friends and neighbors. And I started doing stuff for that, and you know, the response I got um, convinced me that maybe this was something I should follow. So, uh, you know, because I liked getting a response. So I, uh, I got into it, and then uh, a, a couple of years later, I started doing illustration as well. Oh, I was 25, 26. Yeah, it, it was a little late. I, I might have started doing comics a little earlier, but yeah, I was in my mid-20s before it really started to solidify. I was, uh, I was a bit of a late bloomer. I had a lot of jobs uh, uh, when I was younger. I worked in an art gallery. I did construction very briefly. I was a waiter very briefly because I was extremely bad at it. I, uh, I, I worked in offices finally. That was what I, I seemed to settle into. And I worked at uh, an artist licensing, licensing place. Uh, and uh, then finally my last job was at Life Magazine, which was kind of a shambles at the time. It was, uh, it was during the... Uh, Gulf War, and uh, that was an interesting experience. I finally begged them to fire me, and that was my last job. Yeah. Well, I first got a Tintin book for a present when I was eight years old, and the stories are, it tells are just so simple and compelling um, that uh, I just fell in love with them, and I read every book, and... Uh, Actually, I translated a couple uh, from French into English that weren't yet translated. I was so fascinated. Um, unfortunately, my French education didn't continue past that. But um, just he, Hergé created such a compelling, complete world. It was absolutely perfect in every uh, detail. So it wasn't, it wasn't much uh, until a lot later that I knew about his career and about the uh, workshop of, of assistants he had and that he would actually go through the books and update uh, the look of the you know, cars and machinery sometimes, just redo the whole book so that it would stay fresh. And uh, he was just a unique artist. I don't think there's going to be anyone else like him soon. Oh, no, I'm, I'm fascinated by all ephemera from the past, comic books, magazines, children's books. I have a, a large uh, collection of children's annuals at my studio, um, mostly from the 30s through the 50s, but, uh, and, and some extremely bizarre children's books, uh, some that seem more calculated to produce nightmares than uh, not. I love any kind of uh, ephemera that really is alien because it's from the past, if you know what I mean. Uh, something where the attitudes and ideas are so strange to us, merely because, you know, we've moved on. What I got from art school mostly was about attitude, um, the attitude you would take towards your work. I don't think I really took anything away in terms of craftsmanship. Um, and I, in fact, didn't attend any illustration or comics classes. So I'm pretty much untrained. Um, and I think in some ways I'm barely competent, you know. Um, I'm not even sure I'm a cartoonist some weeks because I don't have that facility that I think a cartoonist is supposed to have where, you know, as a friend put it, they just do three strokes and it's a tree. I tend to be very obsessive and very rigid and, uh, you know, it, it's in some ways an amateur approach I have going. Uh, I also, I'm of the age so that I, uh, I was educated before computers were everywhere, so that I've had to learn facility with computers and I'm still, you know, only okay. And uh, I think younger artists today, they, they know computers and marketing, and those are two things that I'm just hopeless at. <laughs>